Hi, I'm John, the Banking Systems Engineer, with another article, Davos Delegates in Denial as 25 trillion of wealth vanishes from the Bloomberg Money Boys. They blame it on everybody when we know, and they say that, yes, they made mistakes, they were bad drivers, but, oh, the people supervising the examiners weren't very good, and that's why they made so many mistakes driving the machine, and I forgive them because I know that it's a malfunctioning machine, and 99% of them have no idea how it really works. So, you're not, yes, you're incompetent. No, you're not incompetent. You're just unknowing and you didn't look for the right answers and you certainly didn't find my blueprint for the banking systems engineering on the internet. So, you can flagellate yourselves all you want, but it wasn't your lousy driving and it wasn't the lousy examiners that ended with the machine in the ditch. It was the factors of positive feedback malfunction in the engine that can only be fixed by cutting the positive feedback, the usury circuit that makes the debts grow beyond our capacity to pay them. Davos delegates in denial at 25, as 25 trillion of wealth vanishes from Bloomberg.com on February the 2nd by A. Craig Kopitis and Christine Harper. And they wrote it January 30th. Regret is cheap for some delegates at the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland. Redemption for their role in the worst economic wreck since the Great Depression comes at a steeper cost. Nobody in Davos wants to get near a negative like redemption, said Robert Dylan Schneider, chief executive officer of Dylan Schneider Group, a public relations firm in New York. But the truth is that everyone here is part of the problem, and the public will soon begin demanding a pound of flesh. No banker or businessman wants to take responsibility, said Dylan Schneider, who counts 40 Davos delegates as clients, their identities shielded by confidentiality agreements. He's their PR man. It's their view that everybody else did something wrong. Questions about responsibility, blame, and contrition hang in the cold mountain air as a glitzy alpine resort this week, like so much exhaled breath. With one trillion in bank losses and 25 trillion of market gone missing since the start of the financial crisis, there is much to account for. There's a great Gatsby quality to Davos, said Neil Ferguson, a professor of history at Harvard University in Cambridge, Massachusetts, referring to the novel by F. Scott Fitzgerald. When people look back at this gilded age, I'm sure they'll, there will be images of the investment bank parties at Davos, just as people look back at the flappers after the 1920s. People are still in denial. Ferguson, author of The Ascent of Money, a financial history of the world, where he explains how piggy banks create money. And a first-time Davos delegate said, there's a sense of let's have a party anyway and let's talk about the post-crisis world as though that could be soon. Stupid things. At a panel on leadership <clears throat> yesterday morning before hosting a reception with champagne and canapes at the Hotel Europe Piano Bar, J.P. Morgan Chase & Company's Chief Executive Officer Jamie Dimon expressed frustration at those who seek to pin all the blame on the bankers. <clears throat> I take full blame for all American banks and all the things they did, said Dimon, 52, the only CEO of a major financial institution to attend the conference this year, adding that he knows that's what people want to hear. Regulators, he said, should share some of the blame. So they were the bad drivers, but they had bad examiners, too. God knows to some really stupid things we've done by, were done by American banks, Dimon said. To policy makers, I say, where were they? They approved all these banks. So they approved your lousy driving, yes. <clears throat> Stephen Green, chairman of the London-based HSBC Holdings, also criticized regulators at a panel about capitalism on Wednesday. Green 60, a Church of England lay minister who's written a book about reconciling, reconciling a life in banking with his belief in God. He believes in God and loan sharking. Called for an overhaul of regulatory environment. Yeah, it's the examiners, not just the drivers. He also talked about the need for self-regulation, saying that no amount of rules is going to enforce good behavior. That's right, no amount of rules can make good drivers, especially when it's the machine that's malfunctioning. Everybody participated. At a press conference on January the 18th, he dodged the question of personal responsibility, saying only that the banking industry has something to apologize for. Yeah, the machinery keeps breaking down. We're lousy drivers. 
One Davos regular Washington-based Carlisle's Group Managing Director David Rubenstein said he thinks a key issue at this year's gathering is who is at fault. The machine broke down, sucker. It's a machine malfunction in the engineering, not a malfunction in the software. Well, it isn't a software. Yet Rubenstein, who was saying at Davos two years ago that the outlook for leveraged buyouts was very robust, says responsibility shouldn't be tied only to him or his industry. There are six billion people on the face of the earth, and probably about five billion participated in what went on, Rubenstein said in the interview. Yeah, I can imagine a lot of Pakistani and Bengali and uh, Indian and uh, Ethiopian peasants participating in this. Yes, five billion. Everybody participated in some way, shape, or form. Spread the blame around. No innocence. That's what they're doing. <laughs> Ruben Vardanian, CEO of Russian investment bank Troika Dialogue Group said just saying sorry is not enough. Our values became miserable, Vardinian said. We are all guilty and the scope of attrition is large. Well, I'll speak for the bankers, not anybody else. Susanna Nora Johnson, a former vice chairman at Goldman Sachs Group and a director of American International Group, Inc., took a similar view. She said there are no innocents walking Davos's icy streets. Well, the poor homeless kids outside are pretty innocent. There's no immunity in any sector, says Johnson, who heads the World Economic Forum's Global Agenda Council on Finance and Business. No one did a good job for a malfunctioning machine, right? Spreading the blame around is one thing. Whether bankers are ready to atone for their actions is another. Well, what can they do? The machine's broken down. Abu Essa Niamatula, executive director of Cheadle Mosque in Manchester, England, who was in Davos to tend the spiritual needs of global business leaders, says Islam calls its cleansing process expiation and that he doesn't expect any takers. You mean give back what you stole? Redemption. Bankers don't want redemption for the moral wrongs they've committed against humanity, says Niamatula. Hey, they're just the operators of the genocide machine. They're not the designers. Redemption is a heavy word for Davos man because remorse must come with sincerity and a desire to atone for the transgression. I'm sure they desire to atone, they just don't know how. There are no sincere acts of sorrow in Davos. While I disagree, I'm sure they all feel real sorry the machine broke down. And that may be because Davos has no time for redemption, says Barry Gosen, CEO of Miami-based global real estate firm Newmark Knight Frank. If a sh shark bites off your leg while swimming in the ocean, you can, can you condemn the shark? This was not an intentional plan to destroy the world. Wall Street was designed to make money and to break down. If atonement is difficult, retribution may prove brutally difficult. Starwood Capital Group CEO Barry Sternlich said in an interview, as Sternlich sees it, everybody wants ahead, and that's not reasonable. To do that, you'd need to out the top 20 executives at the 300 biggest financial firms and run it all with one computer. Yeah! Humility, transparency. The forum's chief redemption officer, John De Gioia, hasn't figured out how to make the moral component a useful part of any economic stimulus package. Do not loan shark to your neighbor. Don't let your bank do it for you either. This moment requires a real humility about the fact that we built these systems and are responsible for them, says the Goya president of Georgetown University in Washington and the head of the Global Forum's Agenda Council on Society and Values. You didn't build the trap, sir. It's a 5,000-year-old trick that has people fooled for 5,000 years. And Jesus said they would forever be hearing without hearing and seeing without seeing or understanding when it came to interest. So don't feel bad. Being fooled is standard for 90% of the planet. None of us has demonstrated the leadership required and humility necessary to respond to the depths of this crisis. Well, I can fix it and I ain't humble about it because I'm Johnny Engineer with a sterling, is that silver, education in engineering and not a screw-up education in economics or law where they get most of their politicians, right? So this is, uh, none of us has demonstrated the leadership. Okay, John Stadzinski, a 52-year-old senior managing director of Blackstone Group in New York, says Davos delegates need more than humility. People can't be transparent until they start being transparent with themselves, Stolzinski said. Important point, we got to become transparent. That'll help. Not.